Hello, everybody. I have uh, 10 minutes to try and show you why I think the generative AI thing is a bigger deal than it, you think it is, even if you think it's a big deal. So that's my job here, uh, try and do it. So I'm a professor of entrepreneurship here at Wharton. Actually, um, if we can get my video on, I just want to, I'll have me introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Ethan Mollick, and I am a professor of management at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. OK, so that, of course, is not me at all. Um, I gave it one minute of me talking in a, uh, about cheese, a single photo of me, and, it was, uh, and I asked it to create a script, and that's the video result, right? So deep fake took two and a half minutes to make. Um, trivial, right? I can do it at scale right now with any voice you want. If you're on TikTok, you've probably seen the Biden, Trump, uh, Obama things. It's easy to do this, super easy. One example, right? Um, so I, I'm going to show you a bunch of different stuff today. Uh, in our 10 minutes together. Um, what I want to do is just kind of give you some context first. So we have two controlled experiments that have already come out about the effects of earlier versions of ChatGPT uh, and, uh, and GPT 3.0 on performance. And we, the results are kind of startling, right? So programmers send, uh, spend 50% less time coding with the earlier version of Copilot. It's not nearly as good as GPT-4, which I'll show you in a second. And we're seeing performance improvements of 30% plus for people doing writing tasks. Uh, I'm seeing 30 to 80 percent performance improvements. These are things we've never seen before. Just to put you in context, when steam power was put in a plant in the early 1800s, it increased productivity by 25 percent, right? And this is white collar work. This is crazy stuff, okay? So I want to just give you a few demos of a few things as examples. I have all of the weird secret stuff from GPT here because they keep giving me things to, to work with. I don't have any relationship with any of these companies, by the way. Um, so let's just say, you know, I am an HR professional. And I'm just doing this all live, so it may or may not work. You never know. Uh, I'm an HR professional who wants to use analytics to improve performance. Give me 20 ideas. OK, so now it's going to give us 20 ideas. Um, it, 40, 400, it doesn't matter. It will do whatever we want it to. Um, do, what, do we, what do we like of these? Any of these so far? Tell me one. Yell me, yell me a number. Five, okay. Tell me how to do five. Okay, and now it's gonna do the steps involved. Now, it's gonna lie. Um, this is an earlier 3.5 model. I'll show you the versions that don't lie as much because it's not connected to the internet, so it's gonna make up information. Uh, it's called hallucination. It's something to worry about, but the newer models do it less. Um, we'll talk more about that, but we can say, okay, communicate with stakeholders. Write, okay, let's just do this. Write me the letter to stakeholders about the rollout of this idea. OK, so we'll scroll down and see that happen. OK. Um, and so it's going to write a full email message out to our stakeholders about this. Uh, we could do things like, OK, um, make it more formal. OK, and now here we go. Um, uh, let's do add an example to the second paragraph of another company doing similar things. Okay, and here we go. Now it's just going to do that. So this co-working, I made it um, AI use mandatory for all my students. It's not giving us a real name here. We can ask it for a real name, and it's going to talk about all of these issues, right? Just did all this work here. By the way, we can also do, you know, draft a formal uh, policy. Okay, let's do that. Okay, here we go. And now it's going to give us a full policy, right? And even if you're working with this, it's saving you hours of drafting time right here. Okay, um, here we go. All right. Um, and so let's do, can you redo the policy as a rhyming poem? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay. Um, it, it does a pretty good Sestina, too. Okay, this is the older model. This is what came out at the end of November. This is not even really the whole thing yet, okay? So um, I think you can already see, right? Huge amounts of work productivity that you can just do with this thing, right? Even if you have to revise things, even if you check data as an expert, massive, massive changes, right, in how we do performance. Let's open chat GPT-4. I want to show you something even crazier. So here's GPT-4. Um, I can say something like, I want to be able to 
um, you know, uh, to paste in a resume and have chat GPT tell um, a resume and let's say, and a performance grade, don't do this at home, please, and have ChatGPT write a performance review and paste it into, uh, let's say, a CSV file, okay. And I'm coming up with this idea here, so don't worry, all right? Uh, let's see here, maybe it's gonna get mad at me, okay, let's see what it's gonna do here. Um, okay, so hold on here, and um, let's just, could you, write a program to do this. Okay, here we go. So it's going to create a Python script. I have, I can't code in Python or any other modern language outside of Stata. That's a joke that will only matter to a couple of you, but it's true. Um, <laughs> and it is, but I have written about 10 Python programs this week. It will create the Python program that does all the work for you. Uh, it's well done. If, it will tell you if you've never run Python, you could say, I don't understand. It will tell you, here's what you download. It will give you the links. It, I have set up, Amazon Web Services, so I can yell party time and my lights flash blue and green and walk me through how to set up an AWS Lambda site and all of the pieces involved in making that happen. Um, if there's an error, you paste it in and it tells you how to fix the error. Uh, I tried another little experiment here, the code's still going. Um, I tried another little experiment where I took Turtle Graphics, anyone who was, grew up in the 80s probably remembers Turtle Graphics, and it was able to convert a Turtle Graphics program into JavaScript, COBOL, C++, a CAD CAM file. It doesn't care. You just tell it what you want and it does it, right? And if there's errors, it fixes it. And this is, this model, we don't have speed differences on, but you can see right here, just, there's a little button I said, copy code, and I copy and paste it. And if there's an error, I paste it in, it solves the problem, okay? So this stuff is not connected to the internet. Let me show you an example of something connected to the internet, uh, which is Bing. Uh, believe it or not, Microsoft's Bing is actually running on ChatGPT4, which is the model I just showed you here, in creative mode. So I'm Ethan Malik. I'm going to the Wharton People Analytics Conference. Who should I meet there? Give me a table of speakers and what our interests might be. So now it's going to go and it's gonna actually search the web and hopefully we'll see what it comes up with. Again, we, we never know till we get it. Sometimes it refuses to do stuff. Uh, here we go. All right. And it's giving me a list of people. Okay, great. What should I say to them to impress them? <laughs> Add a column to the table. Okay. Um, and so now it'll do this, right? Uh, maybe, we'll find out. Um, okay. <laughs> Here we go, here's the, here's, the, here's the conversation started for everybody. All right, so I've got, um, all right, so I mean, this is here, right, right now. You can ask it, by the way, um, you are a Microsoft recruiter. Um, look up Microsoft interview questions, and then you interview me and give me feedback on those questions and my responses, and it does an amazing job, and it will give you all the information you need, right? I'm not even showing you the advanced stuff. This is like all available now, right? We can also just do things like this, where I could say, um, look up the market for HR analytics software, create a table of major companies, and discuss pros and cons. Okay, and we will do that here. Um, and so this is connected to the internet. So if you use ChatGPT, it's not connected. It will make stuff up all the time and you'll be really disappointed. Uh, Bing is not, right? So it's looking up, it's actually giving sources, right? And it's giving all the sort of data that we need to do this. Um, you know, and we can do other stuff too. Like we can say like, um, you know, uh, I've got one minute left. So let me just try one other thing. Uh, I'll show you just one other piece of things you could do. You could do kind of, you know, let's let's just do what name name a sport you guys like to play, hockey. baseball, hockey. All right, create a cool shoe for hockey players. You know, based on the latest trends. Show me the shoe. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Um, and so they've integrated images in um, right now, so it will do image creation. I can show you some other versions of that in just a second. Uh, if you're used to seeing six fingers on things, here we go. Um, it says look at the information here. Let's see if it'll actually do the picture. Uh, it may get mad at me because uh, I've used this a lot. So if I, we do, we'll switch over to something else, but let's see if it will generate the image for us here. Um, so um, there's a lot to kind of think, okay, so here we go, right? <laughs> And, but we could go much higher quality too if we want to switch to another image generator like Midjourney. 
So here's an example of mid-journey. A commercial show to sh photo shoot of cyberpunk sneakers. Again, I'm not sure what's gonna come out of this. I just pre-typed it in. Um, and we'll see what comes out. It'll take a minute to do. So while it's drawing this, the point I wanna make to you guys is whatever you think the change is, it's bigger than you think, right? And this is commercially available, available to everybody for 20 bucks or free, depending on whether you use Bing or not, right? It's empowering people at the individual level. In my little informal Twitter surveys, over half the people using this say they're using it at least partially secretly. I've talked to many people who've automated their entire jobs and aren't telling you guys about it. Um, because why would they, right? Um, and you can do a day's work in a, an hour. Right? And with a really talented person, you can multiply your talent because you're spending your time doing the work you care about. So people, when we survey them about this, oops, I didn't even type imagine, that's the problem here. Um, the, um, when you, we survey people about it, they like their, they do better work as a result. Oops, let me escape that from here. All right, now I mess, managed to mess everything up. Um, in any case, um, let's see if I can get out of this. Um, but, um, what we see happen is, actually, I think I have some older pictures I was doing of this stuff, just to show you an example. Here's, here's, the, here's the commercial photo shoot I tried before, right? Looks like photos, right? I'm just generating right out of the machine with just a sentence. So what I think we're seeing here is a really big change, right? And people are happier using this. They produce higher quality work using this. We don't yet know what it all means. So I can't give you answers on like what is the implication for work. We don't actually know. Also, I can just tell you this is technology available right now. We could stop right now and we have five years of technology overhang we'd have to deal with to figure out what happens next in work. And it's not stopping. So I'm just out in San Francisco. I've been seeing some stuff like the next models coming out are even crazier, right? So, um, and you know, this, the people working on this have shown that it has theory of mind, right? It knows what you're thinking. There's a paper a book coming out in a, in a week from a, the head of Microsoft Research and one of the guys at Harvard Med School showing that it actually does a better job at doctoring than many doctors, GPT-4, without any additional training um, and can actually help you provide, it does better bedside manner and is rated more highly for that. So lots of weird stuff is going on right now and it's really aimed at white collar analytical work. Um, and again, there is no one to turn to to get information about this. You can't hire a consultant who knows the answers to this. There's no instruction manual. This is something to figure out. So the advice I've been giving companies as I, I'm done here is I would think about what is the most dramatic thing you could possibly do. What happens if you ask everybody to, in your, you know, 20% most creative people for the next week, do everything with ChatGPT. Whoever automates their job the most gets $500,000. I mean, we're talking that level of performance improvements and we don't have a lot of answers. So try to give you a preview of a future that I think is here already. It's just unevenly distributed. So some, some of you in the room are like, oh yeah, I'm already doing all of this. And like other things I'm not gonna tell you. And some of you are like, I've never seen this before. That's gonna change very quickly. So hopefully this was interesting and kind of showed you that we have a, a big future ahead of us in the next 10 minutes, uh, in the last 10 minutes, and happy to talk more. Um, I have some guides and stuff online. If you just look for my name and my Substack, I put out a bunch of articles um, and you can take a look at any of those things. And I'm always happy to talk more. So thank you all very much.